Hello everyone and welcome back to more Crash Twin Sanity for the PlayStation 2 and in this episode we're going to be going to the Boiler Room Doom which has my favorite boss fight in the game, you'll see why. But one thing I'm going to go over real quick and that is this. We could collect all these gems around here right now but unfortunately that last one up there, you know that yellow one, we can only collect that after we've done the very last part of this level because it leads us up to that roof therefore we can use that elevator down there. I'd rather click them all in one shot, given the fact that, you know, when I've done those two areas, I can just collect all the gems in one go. Therefore making it a bit easier for myself, because there's really no need to get them at the moment. So apart from that, if you want to know where all, all the gems are and stuff, you're going to have to wait two more episodes for that, or just look up someone else for now if you're that impatient. Ah, yes. The old alma mater. As a former student myself, I'm well acquainted with the many secrets this institution holds. <laughs> if it wasn't for Cortex, we would be screwed, I tell you. <laughs> Apart from that though, this is... Uh, the, well, I thought the door wasn't the right from then, I was like, please don't tell me I'm going to have to just collect those gems. Apart from that though, if I... Okay, apparently wants me to go further. This is the Boiler Room of Doom, which actually has a unused music clip, which is surprisingly is actually from Gone A Bit Coco. Even though it wasn't used for Gone A Bit Coco, they decided to use it for Boiler Room Doom. And it's simply titled Boiler Room Doom 2, this one, which I'm actually probably going to play for you in a minute uh, through editing and things. But uh, after we get into the area, of course, which is this part here. So at the moment, this is the original track going on, which sounds very atmospheric and very suitable to what's going on. But um, now I'm going to play you what the other one's going to sound like, which sounds blimmin' weird, I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it sounds. Pretty weird, right? I much prefer this version because it actually suits what the bloody hell's going on. I'm stuck! The greatest evil scientist in the world! Stuck in a pipe. How could things get any worse? Again, Cortex just gets all the torment, doesn't he? Nothing happens to Crash at all. Nothing. It's always just Cortex always gets himself in these kind of situations. Technically, you could say he is the Tails of the Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Given the fact that in Sonic 2, Tails just literally dies 24-7. I was just pausing to see if I got the gem, which I did. Because I want to be certain that collecting the gems in this place can actually be a pain if you're not really that observant of, as to what the hell's going on. But new gameplay mechanic here again. Um, what this does is we tra trap Cortex in this and we have to basically put him through these pipes <laughs> and then just watch him hilariously just go through them all. I found this really fun. Some people may hate this gameplay mechanic. I love it because it's just funny watching Cortex just go around the place, you know. He's just making him look like a fool. Anyway, yeah, I think that's there's no gems in that bit. There's a particular part where I die. Yeah, as I was saying, there's a particular part where I actually have to be very careful because there's a gem that lies pretty much virtually underneath it. Not the one at the beginning, but the one that we're going to come up to in a bit, actually, I believe. Although, uh, sometimes the control on this bit can be a pain, so what I can suggest, really, is when you get to this bit, move the arm stick slowly forward, and then move the right one, or depending on what control you're using, just slowly. So that way it just breaks it through a lot easier and things. And I believe... Uh, the gem that I always seem to bloody miss, and I don't know why, is this blimmin' idiot right over here. <laughs> I never think to actually jump down there in order to get that gem. 
I, for some reason, can get all the other ones, which are really out of place and pretty hard to reach, but not that simple one there that I have to fall down. That is really annoying, considering I have to backtrack in order to get it as well. Now, even though we have to step on these switches, we also have to hit these blue valves in order for him to go through. If you don't, it results as losing a life, because then you've killed Cortex, and therefore Crash can't really do anything but just stare at you. So that's kind of weird. What's that loop to loop that? What the? Go down! <laughs> Let me know, I thought he's gonna get stuck then. And sometimes this can happen, I will admit. In this area, even if you do it right, but sometimes the programming can be a bit messed up, because Cortex can sometimes get stuck, which is pain, really. And kind of unfair in a way. Plus, where's he come from? Oh, he comes from that pipe. Fair enough. I just thought he falls from the air half the time. That's fine by me. But yeah, I really like this mechanic. It basically just shows what you can do with Cortex. You know, also he's not going to kill that rat, is he? You're going to kill it? Right. Okay. Fine. Cortex. Cortex. What the? You're going to kill him? Oh, I'm sorry, I'll do fine. That's weird. Usually he kills him in that. Oh well. Something new every day, I guess. How are you for jams? We've got two so far, that's fair enough. We're actually at halfway through the game. <laughs> this game is pretty short. I mean, this is episode what? This is episode eight, and this is halfway through the game. So most likely the LP will have 18 episodes, I believe. Practically the same as Rayman 2. <laughs> I guess Rayman 2 is quite a short game after all then. I mean, Rayman 2 isn't really the longest game ever. You can complete it in a whole couple of days. But other than that, uh, Crash to Insanity is more difficult than Rayman 2. I will admit, this game is pretty difficult for a Crash Bandicoot game. Compared to the other ones, anyway. Sometimes due to programming, or sometimes it's due to it actually being difficult in general, you know? Plus, thank goodness, he actually walks towards that. Why didn't he do that before? Because, I don't know if you noticed, but... You know back there where I played... Uh, got a bit Coco in this level, which was going to be used for this level? I was trying to hit that exclamation box, but you have to be really precise on where to throw it, because he doesn't just walk to it, like you have to literally aim him at an accurate position in order to get it. Also, I like the scientific symbols here. <laughs> That's quite a nice touch. There's kind of a flaw in that bit. I don't know why they decided to make that bit difficult, but they just did. Do not move forward in this bit, because you will get crushed by those two. I learnt that by experience, and that was a pain in the ass. I'll tell you. I do like the look of this area though, it's basically just a massive acid rock. Why Dingadial is in here, God knows. It doesn't make any sense, considering Crash 3, where was he? In the freaking North Pole or somewhere, you know, where I mean, the penguin was. I also like the penguin, the fact that he just jumps on him when he dies as well. That's pretty cool. He was in warts towards that gem, I guess he's just a chat attracted to gems by the looks of it, I don't know. Cool. Um, these things here, these things are annoying, you actually... Wow. What? What the... What is it doing? <laughs> glitches galore in this game, glitches galore, I tell you. Don't worry anything that ruins the game, though. Alright, anyway. Let's just let you move this down, shall we? So that way we can see what else there is. Also, we have two gems left. Wow. This is going by really quick. We're only at nine minutes, and we've already nearly completed this whole area. But now time for the tricky part that not a lot of people like, but honestly I say deal with it really. It's not really that bad. <laughs> That's like how when you jump he waves his hands up just like before. <laughs> I don't know, I'm easily amu amused by silly stuff like that. A moose? What the hell's a moose? It's like with a moose or something. <laughs> I don't know if they meant for him to run there. For some reason he just continues to wow, what the hell? <laughs> For some reason, he just continues to run. I mean, look, he just continues to run, like, on it, while I'm trying to wait. I don't know why he does that, but still, that's weird. At least when you die, it doesn't load like crazy. <laughs> I mean, it just kicks you straight back in, just like the original games, you know? But that bat had to be placed there, didn't it? What a jerkish place for a bat to be. <laughs> It takes a while for those enemies to die when they're being flattened. Maybe they're just having their last breath before they just poof in a puff of smoke. I don't know, really. Also, there's a death sign. Hmm, how morbid. Okay, so, uh... Is that all the gems? Not, uh, not all of them so far, but I think that's all of them that we can get so far. If I'm missing one, though, I guess I'll just have to go to it. I don't get that why he falls so slowly in it. Oh, and one thing. Make sure when you do that, you go in the way, otherwise he'll fall in there and die. 
How are you going to know that the first time? I don't know. But for whatever reason, he just happens to line up just there. But don't go on that just yet, as we need to hit those blue valves, and this is the part that everybody hates, really. Yeah, that gem there, for some reason, I don't miss, but the one that's even lower than that, which is the green gem, I always seem to miss. In fact, I just noticed something. It always seems to be the green gems that I always seem to miss. Not the other gems, it's always the green. It's either the green or the purple. The other ones are fine. The red ones, I never really seem to miss or anything. Maybe there's like a pattern, like depending on what colour they are, that depends on the difficulty, does it? Um, ah, there it is, I was wondering where I was meant to go there. That's fair enough. So you have to go all the way up here in order to hit these blue valves. I don't mind this though, I really don't. It's a nice change of pace. Like, I like it when games have change in gameplay, you know, of like what's going on. Even if it involves vehicles, it's fine. A lot of people complain that Crash 3 has far too many vehicles. I don't mind them, I find them tons fun, really. Particularly the motorbikes. A lot of people hate the motorbikes for some reason, I don't. In fact, it's probably my favourite part of the game for Crash 3. Motorbikes. Crash Bandicoot on a motorbike, what more could you want? <laughs> for whatever reason, though, on the box are... What? I was going to say, please don't get stuck. Uh, Coco is on the back of Crash's bike, but she's never on the back, like, in the actual game. Why that is, I don't know. Hopefully after this, there should be that last gem. We're actually gem-wise, we're not doing too bad. Probably because I've practiced this a bit and I know where I'm going and things. Okay. Uh, the gem, hopefully, yeah, I think I remember now, actually. The gem is there. There it is. There's the last gem. And is that all of them? Yeah, it is. Cool. So we're good for completion so far. That's not bad. And we're actually 12 minutes. I honestly thought this would take a lot longer. This part, though, is a pain for the first time. Many, because there are so many blue valve switches that hit in this area in order to get past it. And if you miss even just one, that's it, you have to start again. Like, no issue there, really. You just have to do it all over again for the very beginning. Of course, these rats are evil. I don't even know how they were made. Did Cortex just make them, just like he created Crash Bandicoot? I always find that funny with like storyline. The fact that he created Crash Bandicoot, <laughs> and now he chose to destroy him. It's kind of like the plot line to Animaniacs. You know the Warner Brothers, that those, uh, whatever the professor's name was, I don't know, because I didn't really watch a lot of Animaniacs as a kid, sadly, which is a shame, as it's a really, really good cartoon show. Definitely <laughs> sums up what the bloody hell the 90s was. Absolutely I am. <laughs> anyway, enough of talking about Animaniacs, I'm in the middle of Crusher and Sunset here. <laughs> Let's just hit these blue valve switches, and after that, I think that's the last one, I believe. I don't know, let me just look around just to be double sure. I don't really see more. That should be it then, should it? Plus, oh boy, this bit. This is like Mega Man X difficulty here. Technically, the spikes are instant death, just like in the Mega Man X series. Or just Mega Man in general, really. <laughs> Even though they're not instant death, but they kind of are, because they send you right down into the acid. The spikes in this game are equivalent to Me Mega Man X. Let's just say that. And now, let's just watch Cortex go through this long, long course of a pipes. See if I can capture every moment of it as well with the camera. There he goes, look at that. <laughs> In a way, it reminds me of Sonic Spinball. <laughs> I don't know why. Alright. Thankfully, though, I don't think these things flip over. If they do, then that's a pain. Plus, yeah, that's all the gems. We're good. I may have to keep doing that here and there, so I may have to pause the game and we'll see how many gems I got, just to be sure. As I just want 100% this, just easily. Which doesn't appear to be happening, considering of how much I failed at the Rusty Walrus and, you know, the... Uh, what the... Wow, he was actually on top of the thing, that's different. <laughs> that's weird. Apart from that, though, that's pretty much this whole level here. And now we're going to come across the best boss fight in the game ever, really. I love this boss fight a lot. Many cause one, Dingadal, two, challenge. And I love me a challenge. How's he ain't it? Rumor is you two chumps have got your mitts and some treasure. And I want a piece of that pie. I have no idea what you just said.
You know, I just noticed something. Wherever Cortex is, he always seems to be in grave danger for whatever reason. How sad. But yeah, this is Dingadol's boss fight, which actually is pretty cool. The reason why I like this is it's kind of very similar to, like, you know, the third one where you go around apart from shooting these crystals. Maybe not as good as I do prefer the crystal one, given the fact that it's my second favorite boss in the game. Apart from Entropy. Entropy is my favorite boss in Crash 3. But this one just is bloody difficult for the first time. I was here a while trying to beat this guy. Not to mention the soundtrack in the back is also pretty scary. And my guess is, given the fact that it's too scary, that they actually had to... Oops, what the, what the hell happened there, man? That was weird. <laughs> I like how he also dances whenever he, whenever he kills us. That's like the best thing ever. <laughs> Kind of a throwback to like Crash 3 as well, because that's what he did as well, I believe. I guess I'm gonna cut ahead to when he does these other phases, so that way it makes sense and things, but yeah. This is like Crash 3 without the crystals and stuff, but other than that, it's set in fire. And like I was saying, the soundtrack to this bit is not a Crash Manicure, I tell you. It sounds more like somebody's burning in hell. <laughs> but my guess is because of um, how much stuff is going on, they chose to add all these sound effects to Dingadal because otherwise the sound uh, soundtrack would be too scary. I mean, it makes sense given the fact that you can't really hear much of the music and instead more fire effects and stuff going on, if you know what I mean, yeah? Yeah, it does make some sort of sense if you ask me. Apart from that though, this boss fight is not easy. He's really not that easy at all. I died quite a lot in this guy. In fact, I, think, I believe I even got game overs on him. But after a while, you get used to him. It's mainly just trial and error of this guy. And he even does this jerkish move here where he breathes fire. So that way you actually have to run around the opposite direction. I do love the aesthetics here, though. It's kind of like you're in hell. I suppose this is a boiler room, though. Yeah, it's a boiler oh, God damn, it's a boiler room. Of course, boy. This is why there's fire and stuff all over the place. And if it's a boiler room, why, why is there acid? That's weird. And time for the second phase. Oh boy, this this bit was a pain. Mainly because he just goes up and down, up and down, up and down, trying to hit us and things. Mainly it's all about memorization with this and just getting used to when to jump and things. Other than that, that's it really. But here's the jerkish part that cost me a death and I found this unfair. So he breathes fire for you for a while, but then look. He does it the opposite direction that you literally have to turn around the other way. If you don't do that, you're dead. And um, that's it, you have to start getting killer. Other than that though, um, we're practically done with this guy. Hopefully after this I should just be able to dodge this and then kill him possibly. Just like that, and... Again, <laughs> missing sound effects, that's weird. Although, oh, thank goodness they have a checkpoint here. If they didn't, that would be annoying because there's these rats up ahead. And I believe once I missed the checkpoint, got hit by a rat, and I had to do the whole boss fight again. <laughs> that was the most annoying thing of all time, I tell ya. But yeah, that's dingy. And that is Boiler Room Doom, I believe, which is the first one. Yep, so at the moment we've got no gems, but we've got all of them in Boiler Room Doom so far. Like I said, this one I'll just get back to after we've done these two sections here. I'm just going to do a bit of a weird pattern this time around. So, I guess we're going to call this episode off here with that rather awesome boss fight, my favourite in the game. In the next episode of Crush Twin Sanity for the PlayStation 2, we're going to ignore all this, as per usual, and go straight through here through Classroom Chaos. With a very, very broken animation. And I love it, I really do. Take care, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Crash Twin and I'll see you in the next one. Let's have a look around, actually. Wow, you can even see the ship. That's pretty cool. And a gem!